Hi, I'm Hari and this is Urmil. Hi. I'm an electronics and computer science engineer with over 16 years of experience building all manner of consumer electronics products, from scanners and printers to car and home entertainment systems. And I'm co-founder of Class Systems with more than 15 years of experience in embedded systems. In this video, we will talk about what IoT is and why is it important. We will also briefly talk about the objective of this course. In the 65 years since the first computers became available, they have made an enormous difference to every aspect of our lives. The earliest computers were behemoths, filling entire rooms and capable of only the simplest computational tasks like payroll processing and collating sales data. But since then, they have grown smaller and more powerful exponentially. And each reduction in their size, each increase in their power has opened up exciting and unexpected new applications. Think about the transition from mainframes to desktop machines in the 1980s. That was not just about how much smaller or cheaper a desktop computer was compared to a mainframe. It also meant that every household, every desk at every business would now have a personal computer on it. When the next generation of computers grew even smaller, it once again changed the way in which we use them. Today, each of us transport in our pockets mobile phones with computing power that would have gotten them classed as supercomputers just a few decades ago. As this progress continues, computers are continuing to grow smaller, more powerful, and more energy efficient. In the latest wave, they are also becoming more autonomous, from occupying an entire room, to sitting on a desk, to sitting in our pockets. Computers are now things that we can leave behind in various nooks and crannies of our physical environment. We would have a little computer sitting in our electricity mains, playing the role of a smart meter, another in our doorbell, doubling as a security camera, one in our thermostat, another on the roof behind the solar panels, and so on. At its core, this is what the Internet of Things is all about. A network of connected computers, hidden in every corner of our life, monitoring and controlling things, with minimal input from us. There are three main trends driving IoT. The first is Moore's law or the exponential increase in computing power. The second is connectivity, mainly the expansion and accessibility of the internet. And finally, the availability of a host of uh, exciting new sensors. Moore's law posits that the number of transistors that can be packed into a chip of a given size and hence roughly its computing power will double roughly every 18 to 24 months. It is not a law in the sense of a physical law, rather a prediction about the semiconductor industry's rate of innovation. Surprisingly, it has held true since more than 50 years, longer than anyone, even Moore would have hoped when he initially formulated it. Chip designers figure out newer and newer ways to miniaturize components that go into integrated circuits. This has the effect of reducing price and power consumption of computer chips while increasing their speed. It's hard for us to truly comprehend exponential change since our brains are wired to view things in linear scale. Let's say you had a rich uncle that wanted to give you a birthday gift. He gives you a choice. He can pay you a million dollars a day for the next 30 days or pay you one dollar on day one, two dollars on day two, four dollars on day three and so on. That is double the payout every day for the next 30 days. Which one would you choose? Okay, so that's a trick question, right? 30 million dollars, the total that you would make if you took option one, seems like a lot of money. How long would the doubling process of option two take to catch up? Will it ever? Well, it turns out that in the beginning, you're going to be way behind with option two. But by day 20, you're making more than a million dollars a day. By day 25, you've crossed the payout from option 1. And by day 30, you would have made more than a billion dollars, or almost 36 times more money than if you'd chosen option 1. Today, we are roughly in day 25 of Uncle Moore's calendar. And those early computers from 50 years ago look to us like $1 bills would to a billionaire. Because of Moore's law, almost any number associated with computing has to be viewed in log scale, logarithmic scale, to make sense of. This dark blue line on the top, the number of transistors per chip, 
is the essence of Moore's law. Since it's logarithmic scale, the exponential change looks like a straight line. But you can see that it's not just the number of transistors that's been growing. Clock speed has followed close behind, although that's starting to flatten out. And so has the number of transistors that a single dollar would buy you. Despite this flattening, I think it is still fair to say that there's a lot of life left in Moore's Law yet and we'll continue to see massive improvements in chip costs for a considerable time to come. For IoT, the benefits of Moore's Law come mainly from reductions in the price of chips, their size and power consumption. The second trend driving IoT is ubiquitous connectivity. Your average IoT device does not come with a monitor, keyboard and mouse. It would be quite useless unless you could connect it to the internet. In its earliest days, the internet was slow and accessible only from desktop machines over slow, clunky landlines. Today, the internet is accessible not only from your laptop and uh, desktop computers, but also from your phone, your tablet, your TV, your gaming console, uh, pretty much from any device that you have from and from anywhere that you are, from at your home, inside your car, uh, while you're on a train or while you're flying. Electronic components that are needed to connect devices to the network, particularly those for wireless access such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GSM, have also been crashing in price, becoming simpler to use and becoming more interoperable with each other. What all this means is that the number of connected devices is set to explode is already exploding by the looks of it. By 2020, the forecast is for anywhere between 30 and 50 billion connected devices worldwide. Only a small proportion of this is accounted for by PCs, smartphones and other general purpose computing devices. The rest will be specialized IoT devices. Connectivity also brings a secondary benefit to IoT devices. You are no longer constrained to do all of your processing on the device itself. Part of the processing, the, the task of collating, aggregating, and crunching through the data can be performed by a service on the cloud. Both bandwidth and storage being cheaper in the cloud, this opens up new applications for what can be done with very small IoT devices. The third trend driving the IoT is perhaps the least noticed of all. Availability of a variety of compact, cost-efficient and reliable sensors and actuators. Sensors allow a computer to sense the environment around it and actuators allow it to act on it. Over the last few decades, measuring devices have steadily been going digital. Think of the weighing machine, the thermometer, the compass. Each of this is now preceded by the word digital, as in digital scale, digital thermometer, digital compass, etc. And of course, once something becomes digital, it can be connected to a processor. This is actually a much broader trend. Think of the typical list of sensors in a smartphone, the three-axis gyroscope, the accelerometer, GPS, light and proximity sensors. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many more for all sorts of specialized purposes. And they have steadily been getting cheaper. These sensors allow processors to become much more aware of their environment that is, instantly know what is happening around them. Integrating the inputs from multiple such sensors can give machines insights that would otherwise not be possible to obtain. Actuators, the counterpart to sensors, allow the processor to do something about the information it has. Act on it through digitally controlled motors, servos, piezoelectric drives and so forth. We believe that these three trends together are driving the next wave of innovation in information technology. IoT is simply the name given by industry insiders and technologists to describe this next wave of innovation. It is wrong to view IoT as simply a trend where every device, a television or a toaster gets connected to the internet. Um, it is much more than that. It is about rethinking everyday devices um, so that con connectivity and control from the cloud becomes central to their usage and operation. Take for example the Nest Learning Thermostat. Like any other thermostat, it lets you control the temperature of your home. Even as it does so, it learns about your routines. When you leave the house, when you come back in, what temperature you like the house to be in the morning versus the night and so forth. 
After a period of time, you never have to worry about setting the temperature ever again. Your house is exactly the temperature you want it to be at any given time. Plus, you save in electricity costs because the Nest device knows when you're away and learns not to spend energy heating or cooling an empty house. All this intelligence is not in the little Nest device that you install in your home. Rather, most of the heavy lifting, the learning algorithms, the aggregation of weather and other relevant data, and the actions to be taken are all processed and coordinated in Nest servers in the cloud to which the little thermostat is connected. The excitement about IoT is not just the fact that the devices are connected to internet and can be controlled remotely. Rather, it is the new applications that it opens up because of its connected nature. This course will teach you the fundamental building blocks of IoT. The processors that power these devices, the sensors and actuators that allow them to understand and react to their environment, the options and mechanisms for connecting these devices to each other, and the methods for monitoring, augmenting, and controlling them from the cloud. We will begin with the very basics, allowing you to develop an understanding of these technologies at a fundamental level and building it up from there. This course will be hands-on for the most part, favoring practical knowledge over theoretical depth. We will use proven libraries and frameworks wherever possible. Um, we will prefer open source libraries wherever we can find it. Identifying, adapting and using open source technologies is today a critical skill for every engineer in every field, not just in IoT. But in every case, uh, we will tell you how these underlying technologies work so that you understand the constraints and trade-offs um, involved in every decision of building these products. Spread through the course at appropriate points, we will pay special attention to major problem areas for IoT, such as interoperability, safety, and security, besides other issues limiting adoption. By the end of the course, you will know enough to think critically about system architecture for an IoT device, analyze platform choices given the device's functionality, and chart a path to realizing it. You would have sampled every aspect of an IoT system, from very low-level details such as hardware and sensors, to higher level functionality such as user interfaces and mobile app integration to building cloud backends for such devices. We have an exciting journey ahead of us, so let's get started.